a person embarrasses someone in public, it's equal to murder. Because when a person gets embarrassed in public, you see the blood rushing to their head. It's like spilling blood. So we are up to the third law. This law is so important. This law is so fundamental to everything that we stand for, everything that's about life. And this is why it's in such an important principle and such an important law that God taught us to Adam and then Adam passed it on to Noah and Noah passed it on to his children and to us. So these seven general laws, it's so critical and so important for everyone to learn them, to observe them, and to uphold them. When you do, you are guaranteed to be part of the world to come. The third universal law is, thou shall not murder. This law was told to Adam, was told to Noah, way before the Ten Commandments were given. But it wasn't just told Noah as a plain law, thou shall not murder, without any reason. Actually, Noah was explained the reason why we shall not murder. And Noah was taught that a human being that is born to this world is born in an image of God. Every single human being is handcrafted by God Almighty. This is God's creation. And therefore, every person is not just a person, but every person represents the whole world. As the famous saying from the Talmud, you save one person is like saving the whole world. When we look at another human being, we're not just seeing an individual, but we're seeing rather the whole world. Each individual, when you look at them, you have no idea what their potential is. You have no idea what future holds for them. You have no idea where they're going to be in the future, what kind of effect they will have on the whole world. We go through Nobel Prize winners, inventors, great masters, engineers, etc., great doctors, great philosophers, great artists. They were all once babies. They were all once, you look at them, you would have no idea. You have no idea who Einstein or Beethoven or Moses was going to be. They were all created in the image of God as a baby. But they had such an effect on the world. As all the giants who have done so much good for the world, they were all created in, in God's image. This is the reason what Noah was taught. Why you shall not murder. Because when you look at another person, you're not just looking at a, a body which has those bones, skin and sinews and blood thrown through its uh, veins. It's not just a, a sack of bones and, uh, and, and tissue that a person is. It's not just something physical, but rather you're looking at an existential representation of the Divine Almighty in Heaven. So every person's life must be valued. We must respect and we must maintain, sustain life. And God forbid at any cost, never ever murder another person. Murder is not only prohibited from the Ten Commandments, it was prohibited from creation. God, the most omnipotent, omnipresent, took a part of his soul, put it into a body. Who are we to take that away? Who are we to end that journey? And this is something that the Jewish world has been taught. We breathe it. We live it. It's been given to us in our 
breast milk, to know that we value life more than anything. That's such a fundamental part of Judaism. It's very interesting that there are 613 laws, rules in Judaism. It's not an easy religion to follow. So many rules, so many do's and don'ts. Um, The day of Sabbath, the 24 hours of Sabbath, is the holiest days of the year. And during these 24, 25 hours, there are so many prohibitions. There are actually 39 different prohibitions. You can't cook, you cannot travel, and you cannot write, you cannot uh, work. There's 39 different things you cannot, cannot, cannot do. And if you violate one of those, it's considered a great transgression. That's how serious we take God, the Torah, and the Sabbath. However, if any human being, any person, life is in danger, you are obligated to violate every single commandment. No matter what it is, you are obligated to break every single commandment just to save another person's life. That's how much we value life. That's how much Judaism does to support life, promote life, and murder is prohibited at any cost. And this is something that we learn that if we could implement this as a universal law that all nations adhere to, how different would the world be? When nations who are known to live by the sword, referred to as murderous nations, were to only know that it's a prohibition that God Almighty who created them told them you cannot take another person's life. How much more peaceful would the world be? Look what just happened in Israel on October 7. 1,400 innocents, beautiful people, babies, grandparents, all lost their life to murder, savage murders. And what we as a Jewish people do We're the only army in the world that does everything possible at the height of war to prevent civilian deaths. There's no other army in the world that sends out leaflets and saying, hey, this is where we're going to attack, leave now. There's no other army in the world that announces that they are coming to attack to give the civilians a chance. The world knows how the Israeli warfare is the most civilized warfare around. And that's because we live by the book, we live by the law. We are so saddened and heartbroken by the collateral damage that happens. Every soul that is lost is a loss to all of us. It's a heartbreak. No matter what religion, no matter what nation they're from, we don't want that. Thou shall not murder is universal. So let's pray and hope that we adhere to these seven Noahide laws, that we do our best to follow them because they are attainable, they're doable. We can all connect with it at some level. Now, murderer doesn't just mean physical murder. Murder also means when someone is humiliated, when someone is attacked emotionally, verbally, that is also consider the level of murder. As a matter of fact, they say that if a person embarrasses someone in public, it's equal to murder. Why is that? Because when a person gets embarrassed in public, you see the blood rushing to their head. It's like spilling blood. And that's equal to murder. So we need to be careful not to hurt people verbally, emotionally, of course, physically, and not killing them literally, and not murdering them emotionally. These are all natures that God expects from us because we can do them. They're attainable. They're within our reach. Each one of us as human beings has the ability to act with restraint, to act with control, because that is what human beings have been given, the gift of choosing right from wrong. The free will that every single human being has 
is a gift from God for us. And certainly when it comes to murder, talking about murder, there's been so much murder in the past seven weeks. Let's pray to God Almighty that God should eradicate war and evil from this world. Just like the prophet Isaiah prophesies that when the Messiah comes, there will no longer be any war jealousy. There will no longer be any hatred. We'll be turning our swords into plowshares. And that is so attainable. We pray and we hope that when each one of us learns the seven general laws, the seven Noahide laws, and each one of us practices them as best as possible, that you will be doing your part to bringing in the era of redemption, the era of the Messiah, that we pray and we hope that that happens speedily in our days. May God bless our brothers and sisters who are sacrificing their lives for Israel's survival to come home safe and well. May God return all the hostages safe and well speedily in our days. Amen.